I've been running a lot of uh, Stars Without Number one shots at my local friendly local game store. And it's in like this kind of desert setting. So I've had like desert stuff uh, on my on my mind. Like I wanted to do like a desert um, a mech with like a you know these actually primed. I don't know. No, I don't think so. I think that's just the plastic color. But um, uh, they come with like bases like these. And uh, so it's like a, a large sized base. And then I have, you know, I have these two. Um, these are Reaper. But they, 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 since they're press fit, you know, it's like, and it's styrene plastic, they're, um, they're gonna paint up really well. I'm gonna keep these and put them in my bits box. Um, So what I'm going to do first off is uh, I want to do like kind of a rusty like pitted uh, paint job. So what I'm going to do first is go ahead and do my like undercoat of the, the paint job and go with a kind of a rusty, um, you know, metallic finish. So first coat, I think what I want to use is, um, I actually have some of this, um, I think I have some primer that's like rust colored. Uh, I might use that. And I'm going to use the, uh, the Grex instead of the, um, the, uh, Grex kind of like dumps out paint, you know, and like the the Infinity is kind of more for like minis. This one is very high detail. This one's more like a, this one's like Ferrari. This one's like pickup truck. So, anyways, yeah, I'm gonna figure out what I want to prime these guys and uh, and then we'll get going with that. Um, so these, these little sanding stick things are just like the best for doing quick work of like little seam lines and stuff, like cleanup. It's like if you're gonna go through, if you're gonna do a good paint job, right? Clean up your seam lines. <laughs> uh, you know, like just a few, few little minutes of effort is really gonna improve your paint job in the long run. But these are nice because it just, you know, it gets into those little nooks and crannies and stuff, cleans up little bits like this surgery. Um, these things are, are great though. I forget where I got these. I think I got them at Hobby Town. But um, yeah, quick work seam lines. Okay, so these all look pretty good. Um, I'm gonna try something that I've been wanting to try. Um, I'm gonna do like a, a Zenithal Prime on these guys, but with a metallic finish. So basically the, the highlights are gonna be this, you know, super bright um, Vallejo Model Air Aluminum, which is like nuclear bright um, metal highlight. Um, so, okay, so I got, I got a new toy to these guys and um, these uh, just kind of clip on and then it's good. you can clip them onto the little joints and then, you know, pop them into this thing and uh, makes it easy to paint them. And then this, this part is, since this is all acrylic, I can glue these up with um, uh, some, you know, a, a plastic cement and then it will melt through the, um, this stuff has a lot of acetone in it and it will melt through the paint and just make a, a stronger bond. So, first up I need to prime everything black. Oh, that one's not open. Okay. 
Okay, so everything is pretty dry. Uh, dry to the touch. And I don't need to glue this stuff up really. You know, it's like it's press fit and it's tight enough to where um, I can just, just like press fit it and then pose this thing. Like if I wanted to, I am gonna leave this part. I'm gonna leave the, cause the, the base, I haven't decided what I wanna do with the base yet. I think I am just gonna make these legs. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just glue up this part because um, uh, I mean, I might as well, might as well just pose them. But um, so I'm gonna go ahead and glue the legs up so that this is this stays level. This part right here, and then no matter what I decide to do later with the base, then you know that's where I want it. So I'm just gonna use some. Um, plastic cement and uh, plastic cement um, you know like it, it, it it's gonna melt is it has acetone in it and then it's gonna melt through the um, the paint and then the the capillary action is just gonna pull pull that into the little joint um, so so uh, just get those legs where I want them so that it's, it's always going to be standing upright, you know, like that. Pose this guy and then, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and glue it up. This can also just sort of help your, if you have like a, some plastic pieces and it's kind of a tight fit to get them to slide together, you can just put in a little bit of that and then it just kind of pops right in. Okay, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is um, I'm using, I'm working from dark to light. So I went from black, and then I've got a brown, you know, brown rust. And then um, I'm gonna kind of shoot it down at this guy at like 45 degrees, like so. And then that's gonna kind of get some of those natural highlights and shadows in there. So now, you know, you can see like black on the bottom has the orange kind of um, light rust highlights on the top. And now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do a little bit of um, a tiny, tiny bit of metallic highlights. But this is just, it's gonna be very, very bright. So I don't wanna do too much. see how you know how like super bright and metallic that metallic is so you know I want the, the least of that and keep some of my rust in there and then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do a light uh, little dry brush of this color too I think okay so now um, I'm gonna come in and do a little dry brush of some of this like super bright uh, metallic highlight. I'm gonna use a little, a little makeup brush. So just put a little bit on there, take most of it off, and then just come in and get some, some highlights in there. Mostly just want to catch like edges and details, things that um, like w if um, stuff was like brushing up against it and chipping paint off, then it might not be super rusty. It would have, it would um, still um, have its like metallic look to it. And then the stuff that's around it would be more rusty than the stuff that's on the edges. If that makes sense. 
So I went ahead and glued everything up so that the only thing that has any play in it is these little joins. Just gonna go around and do a little bit of dry brushing on this guy all over. But uh, I wanna keep the, um, you know, I wanna keep the rust and then I wanna keep, um, uh, keep some natural shadows in there. Just make some things pop out. Okay, so you can kind of see like I've got my my highlights in there, you know, and um, the just like keep in mind when you're doing metallic highlights, like the the shiny reflective stuff belongs on the top of things. You know, metal is not shiny and reflective in the shadows. It's it's uh, shiny and reflective where the light's hitting it. So, okay, so now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go uh, um, outside, I'm gonna take this guy outside and I'm gonna hit it with uh, some dull coat just to seal all of this paint job down and then I'm gonna hit it with some hairspray so that I can do hairspray chipping. And I'll explain that when we come back to it. Okay, so I took it, took it outside and then um, hit it with some uh, dull coat or you know a clear coat, something to just seal down this part, right? So that that part is staying. And uh, and now I want to do uh, a hairspray layer. And um, I'm just gonna hit this guy kind of all over with the hairspray. Um, and then that's gonna make a dissolvable layer of paint that um, I can uh, chip away at. So also it, um, <clears throat> it, uh, it kind of acts like a mask too where, say that, um, I don't know, if I wanna come in and, and get some little spot, like say that I wanna leave this grating like exposed, just leave that metal or something up here on the top, then I can leave that as metal. And then, um, you know, if I, if I don't like it, I can just brush away at it with a, with a paintbrush and get the, get the paint off there. So, um, yeah, I gotta let that dry for a second. Uh, kind of flash it off a little bit. I don't wanna water it down. Um, but I'm gonna come in with uh, some of this khaki color, and then I'm gonna do some yellow ochre for some little highlights. And um, the hairspray, you know, it dries really fast. And then if it doesn't, it looks like, it just needs to be like kind of tacky, like, or kind of dry to the touch. And then it's ready to, cause you're just gonna dissolve it anyways. So you don't, you don't really need to, you definitely don't need to wait for it to get like fully dry before you do the next paint layer. So, okay, let's do some khaki. And uh, yeah. And like I can leave the um, the bottom this like kind of black color, but I just want to cover up the uh, any shiny uh, metal stuff. Okay, do a quick little color change, and this is going to be my my highest highlight color. This. Um, uh, VMA yellow ochre. Oh yeah, that pops out. Okay. 
Okay, for the next part, uh, just gonna take some some water and then start um, so that that hairspray layer will just uh, dissolve and sort of wipe away. Um, like I want to get it off these uh, these grates back here. I want those to be like kind of rusty and have some interesting, you know, looking uh, rusty stuff showing through. And then like I can get you know, edges of things where it could have like brushed up against something. Um, I actually just use a toothbrush for this part. Maybe like a little bit more aggressive brush. Um, this is a, a hog's hair brush, so it's you know, it's a little bit rougher and gets those kind of like scratched looks or scratch marks going through there. Um, let's see, be a little aggressive, but it's kind of look that I'm going for. Away at this stuff. I want to make sure and get the edges though, like do these little edges on here and stuff. And then like with the like these rockets, you know, I can just brush the brush the yellow off of there and get the metallic to show through again. Okay, so went around and, and hit everything from all over. Um, I took some parts down to bare metal and then other parts um, like, you know, like little servos and stuff where there's a lot of kind of like movement and things like that. And then, uh, and like on their feet, you know, where they'd be like kicking up dirt and stuff, taking the paint off and, um, and then, uh, so I've got things where I want them. So I'm gonna go ahead and take all of this outside, or I'm gonna take this this part outside, and then I'm gonna hit it with the, uh, the dull coat again to seal that down. And then next I'm gonna come in and do a little oil wash on this guy. And I also think I, do, I wanna do a different base. I think I'm gonna do like a desert kind of uh, base thing. So I might go ahead and take these guys off uh, down here. Take these, nip these little, these little guys off and then glue him down on this one. Okay, I went ahead and glued this guy down to his new base before I start doing the next part and uh, I'm just gonna take some uh, uh, super glue and put it down. And then I'm gonna start putting kitty litter on the base first. Um, so kitty litter is nice because it um, it's absorbent, you know? More so than like aquarium gravel or whatever that's like the right kind of size, you know? So. I'm just gonna go ahead and plop some of this stuff down around him, around on his feet, right? And then I, I like to put the big, uh, the big stuff down first, and then I'm gonna come in with some like fine grit sand and kind of put that around the the big uh, rock, big chunks of uh, like kitty litter. And I just want like a few spots of like some kind of rocky stuff. Um, might put in like a few little tufts of uh, static grass or something like that too. Uh, we'll see. Okay, so um, I think I have some of the thin uh, runny stuff. And like this is, uh, you know, this is like medium, kind of like a thicker super glue and then I have some of the thin stuff that's kind of more like 
water consistency, you know? So I'm just gonna put that on a little bit and uh, kind of like let it run around and do its thing around there, right? And then I'm gonna take a really fine grit sand and put it on around his, uh, around his feet. Brush it off. Okay, so now um, what I want to do is I'm um, going to mix up an oil wash. Um, so I'm going to use a little bit of Payne's Gray, which is just like a kind of like a deep sort of it's a bluish kind of gray. Um, and then I'm going to mix that with some mineral spirits. Uh, odorless mineral spirits just to thin it out and uh, so I want it to be nice and thin and runny and you know I can try it out uh, mix some up put some on and then see if it's like quite runny enough But basically, um, I know it when I see it, you know, like I don't have an exact recipe. It's just like, I know it, I know what I'm looking for, which is like thin and kind of runny. Kind of like, kind of like, yeah, kind of like that. So, okay, let me give that a try. And then, so I can just kind of dab it on there, you know, and then it runs, uh, it runs into the recesses. So you can see how that, um, that gray, you know, this, um, this like deep dark kind of blue gray, it, uh, it brings out like all of the little details and stuff, um, and, uh, kind of bumps up the uh, like the saturation in the uh, that metal and stuff and then and then it makes the uh, it defines all of the little details and stuff like that so you know it just really adds like a another another nice little layer of uh, makes all the details kind of pop out and it makes like metal and stuff look like grimy and dirty and um just kind of bumps up like the richness of all the colors i think it's a really nice step whenever you're doing uh metallic stuff it looks cool when it's done Okay, and uh, so once I have that wash on there, then um, that's it's gonna take forever to dry, right? So what I do now is um, I'm gonna take some uh, streaking grime. I'm gonna use a cracked out paintbrush. I'm gonna use some of this enamel streaking grime stuff. So this is oil based and um, I can use this on top of that wash um, to, and then this is like a much, much denser kind of color. Um, but what I can do is like put it on in some spots and then just kind of like um, where I want to make things look like extra kind of dirty and um, weathered and stuff and it will it'll do the same thing like it'll run into the cracks and stuff um, but this the uh, this stuff is much you know denser it's also much more expensive 
uh, I've seen people where they like thin this stuff down and then airbrush it all over a model and then wipe it off and it's like, eh, you know, it's cost a fortune. But, um, so I'm just gonna put it in some spots where I wanna do streakies. Like if I, if I, you know, like the stuff is coming down in this direction and I can do some little kind of streakies like that. And it's really gonna dirty it up and give it a, uh, a, a weathered looking finish. I kind of pin, you know, put it in like, not just all over, um, but kind of like, just pick out spots where I want this stuff to look dirty and weathered. Okay, and then uh, last step before I let everything dry and go ahead and seal it down, I'm just gonna put a little bit of pigments around the base. And then this stuff, it just, it ends up just sort of looking like uh, dirt, basically. Um, so, and then once the, um, once it gets hit with the, um, once it gets sealed down, uh, basically like this stuff just kind of settles into the cracks and it, uh, yeah, it just, uh, just looks like dirt. And, um, you know, I can put some, like, on the, around, like, on his, um, on his feet and stuff, you know, just, like, some dirt that's, like, kicked up on him. And then the, the, the pigments are gonna kind of settle into the, the stuff that's, um, uh, the mineral spirits and it'll kind of, uh, yeah, just look like dirt.